happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Just realized my, my ears don't actually fit in the, uh, in the group there. Just going to check that I am actually live. If you are joining me, say hi. Um, one second while I just search myself out. I'm happy on. Halloween. Like I am officially here. I am live and in the group. So when you are here, let me know. Say hi. Um, it is Halloween. I have made tons of effort, as you can see. Uh, this, I think, was my costume when I was in university. So somewhere along the way, I have a very snazzy, um, <laughs> want to say bodysuit that goes with it. I don't think I'd fit in it anymore. Um, tragically <laughs> which is a little bit depressing but the ears ears will never ever not fit me also it's really odd trying to do ears with this so when you're here let me know if you think that there is anybody here who wants to be here but is um missing out then please go ahead and share this with them um because obviously we don't want people to miss anything i'm going to tag a couple of people from the post who i know wanted to be here and wanted to catch the replay so it's halloween Obviously, I've said Happy Halloween about a thousand times. If you do watch the replay, then I'm really sorry. Um, I get quite excited about Halloween because it feels like <laughs> it feels like it's the day of the year that appeals to all of my, I want to say, spirit animals in that you get to eat a lot of sweets, calories don't count, and everyone gets to wear costumes. It's not my favorite day. <laughs> Obviously, though, my, my costume, my costume effort, my makeup effort is not as good as Sam Barefoot's. So if you haven't seen Sam's personal profile, check that out because she did full on makeup for the Joker today. It's phenomenal. Um, she Snapchatted it to me and I almost died. So there we go. <laughs> that's how we, that's how we roll. Um, <laughs> yay, we've got Nikki, we've got Sam, Sam with the amazing makeup. Liz, Scott, see, told you, um, and do your makeup like a clown. <laughs> this is a cat, and a cat, Sam, not a clown. <laughs> I'm cat. <laughs> I was trying to purr then, and then I was just like, this is not going well for me. We've got Raphael, yay! Raphael is one of our newest dotties, and also has the coolest name in history. We've, we've all been very jealous about that this morning. So, Halloween. And I've been away for a week and we've had lots of Dossy Life takeovers and it's been amazing. And I just want to share a few kind of revelations that I've had and some stuff um, around sales and launching. Hey, Matea. And around what I'm going to be doing moving forward, because obviously we're finally in Q4. Like October is officially Q4, but November, as we move into November, always feels a bit kind of dreary to me. I don't know whether anyone else gets this feeling, but it's really cold outside. The weather's kind of crap, unless you're in Australia or New Zealand. Diana, Debbie, I'm looking at you. I'm very jealous right now. Um, and so we tend to see this lethargic kind of shift in buyer behavior and I don't know whether whether blah, 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 whether anyone else has noticed that has anybody else noticed a shift in buyer behavior or engagement recently because I've heard this from a few of my clients from a few of my biz besties in the industry who've said Jess what the hell's going on it's like crickets it's like ghost town now there is like I'm putting all this content out and putting these offers out and people are just kind of like sat back they're like oh I'm chilling I'm chilling over here not taking any action, just gonna do my thing. Has anyone else noticed that? Let me know if you have. I'm also gonna check that the laptop isn't fucking up on um, the old what's it. There we go, yeah. Sometimes the laptop doesn't actually show me your comments, but sneaky, sneaky, sneaky Jess has worked out a technological solution. Just watch everything on my phone as well. So anyone else experienced that? Anyone else thinking that the buyer market at the moment is a little bit lethargic or that people aren't responding or engaging in the same way that they used to? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Scott, people seem more interested in my stuff. That's because you're, you're out there. You're doing all the things. It's amazing. <laughs> Scott is like content machine at the moment. Well, for those of you who don't want to say, I, I will say, I think when I was stepped back last week, um, I looked at my newsfeed on Facebook and I was actually I'll never do that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I take a week off and I'm just like I was scrolling through the feed and everything I was seeing was like pitch, pitch, pitch. 
thinly veiled pitch, 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 thinly veiled pitch, 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 pitch. And I felt kind of like, I felt kind of like I did at the beginning of my business when I felt like I was always being told that I was doing something wrong. And I kind of was a bit like, well, sorry, I'm trying not to scratch off my nose. <laughs> I felt like I was being constantly told that I was doing something wrong, but I was never really told what I was doing well. And so when people were selling to me, I was like, oh, do I really want to buy? And I started looking at the people who were being still highly engaged with online, the people who were doing interesting things. I worked out a couple of correlations I thought I'd share with you guys today around why they're successful and around why people are still buying from them at times when we traditionally kind of think, oh, people have put their credit cards away. They're, they're not interested in buying until after Christmas now. Not true. December, always the biggest month of the year, always. Um, and look at some of the revelations that I've been having and, and some of the messaging things that have been going on there. All right, so Joyce, folks kind of go into no spend until the sales days of Black Friday. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? In the UK, we don't have small business Saturday. Or I, I've not heard of it. Like, it, it's not a thing. I only heard of it last year. Um, I've never, never actually seen it in the UK. We have Black Friday, and that's becoming a thing. Um, actually, I said to Sam on Sunday, I was like, we should get a new TV on Black Friday, because I saw all the signs coming from the shop. So I'm with you. But there are a few things that kind of stood out and the the things around the people that I wanted to engage with on my week off were more around the content they were putting out and the message that they had. I found myself recently being really, really attracted to, <laughs> to rugby players. <laughs> if anyone's listened to my podcast episode this week, <laughs> it's all about the All Blacks, right? <laughs> um, but seriously, the people that I've been most attracted to have been the people who have had a really strong message. It doesn't even have to be a message that I am necessarily at that point in time really interested in. But the people that I've been following and really attracted to this week or the week that I had off were the people who had this really strong core message and this really strong ability to make me think something different, to challenge my beliefs, to inspire me to change, to inspire me to do something, to take action. And it's it's really interesting for me. Hey, Debbie. Um, it's really interesting for me because I think we all naturally assume that we have to give, and I'm going to talk about value in a sec. Um, I think we all assume that we have to talk about our subject matter expertise all of the time to be interesting to people. I know that when I started out, I was very much like, this is how you set a goal. This is how you make money. This is how you do the thing. And actually what I found was that it really started to hurt my audience because they can't keep up. Like my, you know, the speed of implementation is actually slower than the speed of content creation. And I was talking to one of my amazing masterminders, Liz Melville. So bow down to Liz because she totally takes credit for this. Um, the other week on one of our calls where she was saying that audiences are so overwhelmed by the amount of content that's out there. And so I think this call was about three weeks ago. Was it not, Liz? About three weeks ago. And we talked about how people are overwhelmed and how everything that we're seeing is constantly giving us, you've got to go and do this, you've got to go and do that, more ideas. <laughs> Don't blush, it was, it was good, it was a good idea. Um, I loved it. And we're, we're always competing with this perspective of we have to give value. And that's something that I've been preaching for three years and I still totally believe in, so FYI, that's not changed. Like, we still have to lead with value. But what I felt most overwhelmed by on my week off was the sheer volume at which it was coming at me every time and i i admit i was i was on holiday um but every time i picked up my newsfeed to have a scroll there was so much stuff that i had to read there was so much stuff that i felt like i had to do and i don't know whether anyone else does this but i always save interesting posts and after my week off i went in so on monday yesterday I went and looked at how many saved posts I had, and I have like 3,200 and something saved posts from Facebook. And I was like, whoa. 
I'm never going to go through them because also Facebook doesn't have a great search function. And so that means that you end up like just scrolling through the inane crap, like, hey, if, <laughs> if your name is on this list, you're one of the most like angry girls until you're fed. Yes, my name is also on that list because I, I get angry, okay? Um, Matea, absolutely overwhelmed. Sometimes you don't know where to turn first. Exactly. And that's kind of how I felt. So I was on my week off and I was like scrolling and I was like, oh my God, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I was jumping back into this pattern that I hadn't been in for a long time where I constantly felt like I've got to get ahead of the curve, I've got to do things, ah, like all the time. And I wasn't even seeing anything. Like my friends got engaged a couple of weeks ago and I, I saw one post off the cuff and that, that was because I bet Sam 50 pounds it would happen that weekend and I was like, I need to check in because I could be could be winning here. Um, and I did win, so <laughs> Sam owes me 50 pounds. If you ever watches this, Sam, you owe me 50 pounds. Um, but I, I don't see anything like that. Like I, I, even though like 60 odd people had commented on their thing being like, congratulations, the ring looks great. I didn't see it. Instead, what I saw was like all of these posts about marketing and about, you know, are we, you know, are we helping our clients buy my thing, do this, that, da, 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 like noise, noise, noise. And so what I did when, how I spent my Sunday, glamorous as I am, um, was actually remove myself from a lot of the noise. Because I don't know about you, but I don't function well in noise. And some people incidentally said this earlier, I think it was Joyce and Nikki, who said that they couldn't listen to the podcast and work at the same time, because it's, it's distracting. Your brain's trying to do all of the things. And for me, the online chatter has got very distracting. And it's, it's very noisy. And there's always something that I have to catch up on. And there's always a, a video that I've missed. And what it's meant is that the stuff I've actually invested in, I don't do. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't do anything. I, I, I'm not reading the, the course material. I'm not implementing the things because there's so much noise all the time that I'm like, shit, I'm missing out. And as we all know, if you've listened to the podcast, I'm a fear of missing out person. I'm like, oh, I have to do that. So for me, it became very, very noisy last week. And so I decided on Sunday to sit down and clear my inbox. And I unsubscribed myself from a ton of email lists. You know, I didn't unsubscribe myself from my favorites. Um, Ashley Ambage, she sends me an email every day and I love them. So I'm like, love it. They're short, they're sweet, they're actionable. Sometimes they're really long and juicy and I just love everything about them. I stayed on Amy Lynn Andrews. Um, newsletter because again it's really really uh useful and i found it really helpful everything else everything else because as i was looking through my email inbox and i honestly i had like 20 emails come in on i think it was friday afternoon so friday afternoon literally the world and his dog emailed me um i'll show you my new fish in a minute i got really excited then i was like ah new fish i'm meant to tell you because i talked about dogs um emailed me and I got I got like 20 emails in a day and I looked at them all and every single one of them was the cart's closing if you don't buy this now then your life is over this magic pill buy this huge solution blah, 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 blah. like and I felt really I don't know I kind of felt you know when um did anybody ever have hotmail anyone ever have hotmail just me I have a hotmail account still um but when I had a Hotmail account, hilariously, I still do, um, all I used to get was junk every day. I'd get like Viagra notifications, like nonstop, and I'd get like 50, and I'm not even a man. <laughs> I like I don't even need Viagra. Um, but that was all I got all the time. Take this Viagra pill, have this penis enlarger, all these things, completely irrelevant, um, designed to make you feel inadequate, and a shit ton of them. Like they just came all the time. <laughs> I can't, I can't stop laughing. I said Viagra and came in the same sentence, like life is over. Um, but right, it was total spam fest, okay? This is how my email inbox looked on Friday. I was literally reminded of it. I was like, oh my God, it looks like hotmail. I had so much crap. And so I unsubscribed myself from a ton of lists, and I unsubscribed, you know, or unfollowed a bunch of pages that I weren't really relevant anymore. 
and I left a bunch of groups that didn't really help me anymore. And I felt really good. You know, I, yesterday I was like, oh, I can just, I can just breathe. <laughs> Scott, Scott, you can have the password to my inbox. Not a problem. Although, given that your wife is pregnant, I think you're probably doing okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> quality, not quantity. <laughs> but this is the thing. And so, you know, it, it's like Kirsten saying, I feel like I'm drowning in noise. It's hard to keep up. It is. And so what I want to say to you today is that actually too many cooks, too many cooks spoil the broth, right? That's the phrase that we all know and love. And I'm tired of being a cook in, in a, a multitude of kitchens, right? I'm getting really cross about it. I'm getting quite, not resentful, um, because I think that's quite a strong word, but what really, really hacks me off is that we're creating, as business owners, we are creating a generation of what some people have termed, and I think this is hilarious, ask holes. I'm going to write that in the comments so that you can see how hilarious it looks when it's written. Um, but we, we are creating this. Um, and actually, it made me feel very sad that I'd contributed to this epidemic, right? Because it is, it has become an epidemic. We have created businesses where we are competing all of the time with everyone else's content and you get people who are going from Facebook group to Facebook group to Facebook group and they're asking the same questions and they're getting the same answers and nobody really knows why, right? Nobody knows why. I don't know whether you're asking because you genuinely want to know. I don't know whether you're asking because you think that it, it's engagement. I don't know whether you're asking because you actually really want to know the answer or whether you want to pitch or something. And that is what we've created by creating so much content that people can never ever consume and that they can never ever action all of it. And so, you know, typical Jess fashion, I was like, okay, well, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to do it anymore. No thanks. Um, because I love answering questions. I really do. Like, I, I love it. When people come to me and they're like, Jess, how can I solve this problem? I think I should have been an engineer. I, I just do. Like, I, I, I like solving the problem. It's, it's, you know, put me in an escape room and I'd be happy. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> all this thing, right? What I'm not happy about is the way that I feel. And this is my choice, right? I'm, I'm letting you guys in. I'm being very transparent about this because nobody else is. Um, but I'm going to be very transparent. It really hacks me off. When I, uh, when I go out of my way, like Scott's just said, said, to answer a question for somebody, to give them my real opinion in a community, in my free community, and then they go into 10 other groups and they ask the same question there and there and there. And I get, we want different opinions, absolutely. Also though, it's a little bit spammy. And what it says to me is that actually, you didn't really value my answer. And that's cool. My answer may not have been what you wanted to hear. It may not have jived with the way that you want to sell. It may not have made sense. It may not have helped you. It may not have appealed to your personality or sales style or buyer style or whatever. Whatever. It was just wrong, right, for you. In that case, though, can I just ask that, you find somebody that you actually really jive with and you consume all of their content and you implement it and no one else's. Because what's happening and what I'm seeing in the industry is everyone bounce from guru to guru to guru to guru. And I don't really want to put myself in that category because, you know, gurus wear nice clothes and on. <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to think what a traditional guru does without being really stereotypical, and I don't know. Um, but I, I don't want to put myself in that category, but I also don't want to be that person anymore because what I'm really tired of is people then going, oh, but Jess, someone had like a, a K 
countdown timer on their sales page and they were like, you have to get in because otherwise you'll never get this magic pill solution. And I bought it and I did nothing with it because I was so busy watching every single Facebook group owners webinars that nothing worked out. And now I can't make my business work. Right? I'm tired of seeing it, if I'm honest. And I'm also really sad. Like, I, I am sad that that happens. Okay? Um, Joyce, that annoys me too. Yeah, exactly. You could have spent the five to 10 minutes on client work or building a business or something else. Exactly. Right? So, yes, Liz, that's what I was looking for. Long white beards, caftans. Knew it. I knew it. I was like, I was trying to think of those big poofy trousers. Right? <laughs> Can't remember what they're called. <laughs> Scott, if people want a magic pill solution, send them to Hotmail. Now you're talking. I have to get that in my autoresponder. Kirsten, I see that loads and it's very annoying. You should be asking questions to people you really trust and implementing it instead of just throwing enough mud around seeing it it sticks. Exactly. And so that's what I kind of want to say today is gently remind everyone that if I and my ears and my whiskers are not for you and my advice isn't helping you, that's cool, right? I can't get it right all the time. But please find one person, just one, who you really respect, who you really trust, and go and consume all of their content. Don't go and be dragged in by the, the shiny Facebook ads and the, you know, the, the fancy countdown timers and the posts that say, if you never do this, then you'll never make it. Just go and consume one person's content and consume their free content, do your due diligence, and then step up, pay them, buy something, right? And I, I don't say this very often because I'm a firm believer that you can invest in your business at different levels and in different ways, with time, with energy, with money. But what I am seeing is this culture of people saying, I'll invest when, I'll invest when. And that never bothered me. Never, ever bothered me. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, Liz. I've got your ads. <laughs> I bookmark all of them. I'm like, Liz Melville. <laughs> or written by Liz Melville. Um, it, it never really bothered me uh, that people didn't buy. Um, didn't, didn't worry me at all. In the current climate, though, can I be really honest? It does bother me. It bothers me because what you're doing is you're being passive in your business. And when we say, I'll invest when, this is not me going on a money mindset thing or anything, and it's also me not me being manipulative and saying, if you don't invest in your business, then X, Y, Z. It's me saying, follow somebody for a reasonable period of time. For some of you, that will be two weeks. For some of you, it will be three months. For some of you, it will be six months. Doesn't matter how long. Consume their content. Do your due diligence. Find out if that person can help you take your business from where you want it, where it is now to where you want it to be. And if that's the case, do work with them in some way. Join their membership site. You know, most people have one now as a lower entry offer. Join it, see what it's like. Pay for an upsell. They, they're always between 27 and 97 bucks, right? See what it's like. Implement it. This is the key thing. When you buy the upsell, when you get into the site, when you, if you decide to hire them one-on-one -on -one off the bat, fine. For the love of God, and all things, you know, that we revere, um, implement the stuff. Because the culture that we're seeing right now is lots of people who don't want to do, right? And that's tiring. It's tiring for you because you're getting tons and tons of content and you're thinking, God, I've got all these amazing ideas and none of them ever get done because you've got so many in your head that you, you don't have time for implementation. You only have time for thinking and that doesn't really help build a business. Yeah, you need some thought processes, but also you need a lot of action. The other thing is that from a business owner's perspective, what happens is we then see the same people do the same things. And it's incestuous, right? You would agree. I see the same people over and over and over. That's how I know about the asshole thing, 
because I'm like, I see them all the time asking the same friggin' questions in every group that I was in, but I'm not now. Um, and what happens as a business owner is when that person actually wants to step up at that moment that they are ready, you don't believe them anymore. And that for me is the sad bit because at that point when they genuinely are ready to step up and to say, yep, I want to invest in myself. I want to do the thing. You're like, yeah, yeah. I've had five discovery calls with you. I've seen you post in every single group that I'm going to buy the thing. Or I'm going to take the action or whatever. And it's too late. And I don't want my community to feel like that right? I want my free communities, I want my paid communities to be places where people actually take action, where they do the work, where they show up. I want to be excited when I see people in my community and go, oh my god, yeah, I know that Joyce is doing this, I know that Liz is doing that, and I know that Kirsten's doing this. And I, I want to be excited about those things. And I want to trust that people are going to get shit done. And that's one of the things that genuinely saved me last week if I'm if I'm totally honest the thing that saved me last week was that I would scroll through the, the news feed and I'd be a bit like Ugh. um that's my face for like complete boredom and then I would go into the jotties and I would look at the people in there and I would look at them supporting each other and I would look at the masses of action that they were taking and it lit me up because they were going out, they were, you know, launching new programs, they were supporting each other, even when, you know, things looked tough, they were working through difficult situations, they were reaching out to have virtual coffees with people. And honestly, that made my week, because I was like, there are a group of people that I want to actually spend time with. <laughs> I love that, Liz. A little less conversation, a little more action. I don't know. Like, I was going to try and hum the tune, but it didn't work. Um, but this is the thing. You know, yeah, exactly. There's always a post about someone making leaps in progress. And that's what I want everywhere. Because if we're honest, you know, and I used to have this in corporate. You, you may have had the same. We had people that we called, like, the water cooler people when I was in corporate, and they would be the people who would stand by the water cooler. Yeah, we were original, okay? Um, and they would just moan all day long. And every time you went past, they were having like their 17th drink of water for the day, because apparently these people were like the human cucumber. Um, and, and they were having like their 17th glass of water for the day. And they would always be like, something's wrong. There's a problem. There was nothing good for these people. And do you know what? They were like atoms. They would bring in other people. It was like the water cooler was the nucleus, right? And it was sucking in all these negative, whiny, whingy people. And it got to the point where I was like, I'm just going to drink water from the tap because I don't want to go over there because those people will bring me in and, and drag me down and I'll never get back to my desk, right? And that to me is how Facebook feels a little bit sometimes. There are lots of water cooler people. There are lots of them. The assholes are one generation of, of water cooler person. Persons? <laughs> I don't know. Humans, right? But there are lots of little groups that get a little bit like, Ugh, and a little bit stale, and a little bit gross. And I don't want to surround myself with those people. And when I find that it's happening, I do this terrible thing. I retreat because I'm like, oh, and naturally I'm somebody who's quite introverted. Not in the sense that I'm shy or that I don't like talking to people, love talking to people, but that my energy depletes very, very quickly when I'm surrounded by people who aren't engaging me, who I'm not having fun with, who I'm not enjoying spending time with you know even if I'm just debating or something I'm having a blast and if I'm spending a lot of time with people who are negative who don't look for the good in situations who that's my alarm um who aren't interesting me then actually I find it really difficult 
to participate. I find it really difficult to show up and give my energy because it makes me feel really uncomfortable. And I don't, I don't want to have to justify to people why I'm happy or why I'm having a great day. I'm just like, okay, look, you know, something crap happened, but I'll bounce back tomorrow. And so that's how I'm kind of feeling a bit at the moment. And that's why I've been a little bit absent in here because there have been times where I've just been like, I just don't want to show up, right? Because I don't have the energy because I am a little bit tired of seeing the same behaviors. What I also realized though, because put my hands up, be the change you want to see in the world, is that I have to take some responsibility for, if I don't show up and I don't change anything, nothing happens. Yeah. Ooh, light bulb moment, right? And so that's why I'm going to be at a point where I'm going to be encouraging people to stick with the expert that they feel comfortable with. If it's not me, I'm very sad to see you go, but cool, we'll, we'll meet sometime again. If it is me, great. What I'm going to do is start changing the way that I show up so that I'm showing up in a way that feels good for me. And also so that actually my free communities can get the most benefit and that my paid communities get everything that they need as well. Because as we're expanding in different areas, you know, we've got the free community, we've got the dotties, I've got my masterminders, I've got my clients. There's only so much energy I have and there's only so much that I can give to my audience without getting to the point where everybody is overwhelmed and um, struggling, right? So this is my honest solution right now. I want to change the way that I show up, so I'm going to, because ultimately I didn't create a business so that I could live to everybody else's expectation of who I am and what I want to do. I created a business because at the time I needed to, I had a chronic illness, it wasn't something I can continue with my job. And because at heart, I'm kind of a bit of a rebel and I don't like being told what to do and I don't like it when other people are like, oh yeah, you have to do this, because that irritates me. So I need to continue down this path of having this business where I get to grow and change and pivot and lead differently when I need to. And right now, I need to lead differently because what I'm seeing is my audience struggling with too much content that is too overwhelming, with too much noise that they can't keep up with and actually not having fun. You know, so many people, because everyone's buying into the shiny objects and everything like that, are putting themselves hugely in debt to go into business, worrying about feeling like a failure if they have to go back to work which is ridiculous. Like I would definitely go back to work if I needed to. I'd probably have a blast. I'd stack shelves in Lidl because it's just across the road. Um, and I say that with all seriousness. And that's what I'm seeing and that's what I'm not enjoying. So what I'm gonna do is try, because all I you know, can do is, is try and be a more responsible business owner. And ultimately that means giving you only what you need and not feeling this huge pressure, although I'll still feel the pressure, obviously, because I'm human, to compete with the sheer volume of content that's going out there. So all of the people who are in my ear saying content is king, got it, but I'd rather have quality content going out there that is gonna benefit my audience rather than all of the time being in your face, okay? So changes, as it were. Free community. I'm gonna be here once a week. I will do one live training once a week on something. As usual, it will be in depth. It will be 30 to 45 minutes. So basically, it will still be a mini webinar every single week. I'm committed to doing that. It will be on a Tuesday, because I like Tuesdays, and Wednesdays I have my dotty stuff, and I, I wanna get that, that kind of thing, okay? So every Tuesday, there will be a mini webinar style training. It will be on something sales, leadership, or performance related. Expect that it will involve you taking action, right? If you don't take action, if you don't implement, that's cool, that's up to you. But ultimately, 
if you're not taking action, if you're not implementing the free trainings, you're not going to see value from them. So I don't want you to feel this pressure to consume things that you're not then going to go away and implement. All right. I won't take it personally. So please don't worry about this. Right. Don't, I won't take any of it personally. The second thing is that in terms of being in here during the day, I am in here every day. I'm always in here. I'm always answering questions. I'm always um, helping people out, networking and connecting people, all that kind of stuff. Whilst that won't change, I'm going to spend my time mainly focused on people who I know implement. So if you are guilty of being somebody who asks a ton of questions in a ton of groups looking for different answers, and I happen to be in those groups, be aware I will not respond to your stuff. I don't have time. You already have enough answers. And I don't want to end up feeling like this is just another community, because it's not, right? It's a community that I love and, and that we've spent as a collective an awful lot of time growing and, and enjoying. So I'm gonna put my focus back where it needs to be, on people who do the work. So if you're somebody, even if you're a lurker, right? If, you, if you're like, Jess, like your content, but I lurk and I, I don't really wanna step up and say anything, fine, right? You, you can still ask questions, you can still, still ask. And if you say to me, hey Jess, watched this training last week and I went out and did this and I have this question, all over it. I will be on that like a rat on cheese, okay? But I want to, I want to stop rewarding the crap behavior. And I also, if I'm honest, want to stop spreading myself so thinly because I'm only one person. And whilst I, and I was thinking about this in the car on the way home today, I was driving down the road. Obviously, I wasn't driving in like the sea or anything. Um, I'm only one person. I only have so much energy. And I think that there is a lot of pressure now. Sorry, Scott, I'm going to pull out the woman card, right? I think there is a lot of pressure right now on women and men to have it all and therefore to be it all. And I can't right? I'm human. I don't want to be superwoman. I've never wanted to be superwoman. Wonder Woman, I've often wanted her shoes, but that is different, right? I recognize there are certain skills I have and certain skills I don't. And ultimately, I also recognize that sometimes that means that I have to say, do you know what? That worked, was working for me, that I really enjoyed, is not now working for me, and I don't enjoy it. And I think that there is a lot of pressure now to have the successful career, have the babies. If you've already had one baby, then you have to have two because whatever. You have to get married. You have to do the house stuff. She says it's her house looks like a tip. Um, th there is a lot of pressure, exactly, Joyce, to be everywhere, to be everything, to everyone, everywhere. And I can't do that. I physically cannot do it. And I also don't want to. I don't have the mental energy and I don't have the physical capacity to do it. So what I want to do is cut back a little bit and say, okay, cool. I really want to be in my Facebook group. I really want to cultivate this community. It's genuinely a community that I value and that I enjoy spending time in. I want to reward the action takers. So if you are in here, even if you don't buy anything from me, I don't care if you buy anything from me or not, like, but if you're in here and you're implementing and you're taking action and you are supporting other people, I will give always, I promise, my best energy to you and I will show up and I will create amazing trainings and I will commit to doing those things and making this a community that is enjoyable and fun and well. If you are a dotty, dotty see me all the time. Dotties were like, we see you all the time. You're always, always there. Dotties, nothing changes, right? I love the Dotties. I love being in that group. It's fun. It makes me smile. There are people, even when there are challenges, there are Dotties supporting other Dotties and there are people suggesting solutions and networks. And one of my, one of the Dotties actually messaged me today and she said, it's like I found a group of girlfriends online and you have no idea how much I needed it. And I was like, I didn't. And I had no idea how much I needed it either. 
I needed that space to just be me, right? I needed the space where I could just be like, whew, tough week, whew, had to do something scary, had to step out of my comfort zone. Because actually, I thought that I could do that in the free community and it turns out I can't and I don't want to. I want to do it in the dotties because that's my safe space. That's where I get to show up. That's where I get to show up real, raw, authentic, and I can just do the thing, right? And then my paid clients, I have to focus on them. I have to make sure that they are getting the results that they want to and that I see for them. And I want to be focused on those people again, the people who are taking action because that's what I want to reward. So I get that it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a weird one. You know, I love that everyone's addicted to the dotties. It is the best face on the internet, it really is. You know, um, I'm sad that the launch is done, but we've got an amazing space, we've got amazing people and, and that's really, really important to me. Um, and I'm very, very lucky. You know, I, I think it's, it's a huge, it's just a huge testament to the women in there, but it's, it's incredible. So I think that's, that's where I am right now. And there was, you know, there were lots of things I could have done for this live. I could have done another how to do a sales call, how to do this, how to do that. But frankly, if you want the how to stuff, the podcast is there. It's right there. It is so actionable. Like people are using it every day. They're landing new clients. They're doing the things and they're loving it. And you can listen to it whenever you want. Right? You, you can show up, you can do whatever. You can listen to it as you're in the bath, washing the car. These are some examples I've had from people. And it is the how-to. And then once a week, I'm gonna be in here talking about action and implementation and things that you can do right now to make your business move forward. Because that is what I'm about. It's about high performance and action and making things work. And then if you want anything else, if you think I don't quite get enough Jess in my life, hearing her twice a week on the podcast, once a week in the free group, and you want my tailored opinion or answers to your questions, like personally, when we reopen the dotties, don't sit on the sidelines, jump in. Because that really is where I have the time and where I have the mental capacity to answer everyone's questions individually. You know, today in the dossiers, what have I done today? I've taken a quiz for Jen Berkelman's, which is amazing, by the way. I have um, tested a Zoom room for Anushka. I have read through some copy for Suze. I've, you know, been in there all day doing these things and I love it. Because ultimately, that's what I love doing. I love coaching. I love helping people. And I love having a space where I get to do that and where people action it. Every single day, there is a dotty who's done something amazing. Every single day, there is a dotty who's made progress. Genuinely, I've never been so lit up by a group in my life because they're amazing. They actually do the work. They get the results. It's phenomenal. Like, it just is. And yeah, exactly this, right? It, it's a free group. So that's, that's the way that I'm gonna move forward. The other thing that I'm gonna be doing is, so obviously there'll be the once a week live training in here, and I will be, I'll still be in the group, I'll still be talking to people. If you're posting things, I'll still be, you know, the things that catch my eye that I'm like, oh, that's fun, or that's interesting, I'll still be engaging with. I'm also gonna move back to a little bit more of a bloggy type model, because I really used to like blogging. Also, can't write, don't like, I've been telling myself for two years, I don't enjoy writing. Actually, I kind of do enjoy writing certain things, right? And so I'm gonna go back to, to that in here. So you'll see posts from me that are designed to make you think, to challenge a perception, to help you move forward in some way, okay? So kind of like the ones that I've been posting over the last few weeks, just to make you think a bit differently, to make, to pose a different question, to make you have a bit of a like, ah, oh, that's, that's kind of cool moment, right? So that's what's gonna happen in here. Nothing changes my paid clients, nothing changes my dotties, but that's how I'm going to be showing up. And I thought that was kind of important to share with you because people have come and been like, oh, Jess, you're not as present in the free group, and I'm not. I have to be honest, I'm not. What I am trying to do though 
is lead by example. I'm seeing a ton of people online who are preaching, I've got a freedom based business. And they're up at 3am posting their 12th post of the day. Now, unless you constantly live jacked on coffee, and apparently if you have small children, any kind of animals, relationships, this is a bad idea, that doesn't work. It's not sustainable. I want to be in bed by 11pm. If that means I miss a couple of posts, life happens. You know, if it means I respond to my emails within 24 hours, do you know what? I'm doing well. And this is how I want to build my business. And this is how I want my clients to build their businesses. I don't want to lead from the front and say, or preach, hey, you guys, you guys go and take weekends off. You guys don't work 12 hour days. You guys go and do all these things. And then for me to be like, but it's 9 p.m. and I think I'm just gonna do this webinar and I'm just gonna do this thing and I'm just gonna do that. Because ultimately I know that's not how you have to build a business. And I know that it's not why most people do. And most people who end up building their businesses like that lose some of the most important things in their lives. You know, they, they lose their passion for what they're doing. They have this huge hustle. They burn out. They get really stressed. Their partners get upset. Their families get upset. And it causes problems. And that's not how I want to lead. It's not how I want to show up. So this is, you know, I love it. Joyce, I've been done by eight or nine. Exactly. Right, and that's the thing, I like watching Netflix. Say Yes to the Dress is like my favorite program. I like watching that, it's at 5.30 to 8.30, every single day on Quest, okay? <laughs> exactly, Max needs cuddles. And this is the thing, so I wanted to share it with you because yes, I haven't been as present in here. It's not because I don't love the group anymore, it's not because you know, I, I'm not interested in the people in the group, it's not even because I'm gonna shut the group down and be like, everyone needs to be a dotty if you want some, you know, some time with me. That's not it. It's that actually, I don't want to burn out. I don't want to compete for space. And I don't want to overwhelm my audience anymore with tons of stuff that you can only consume and never actually implement. So that's what I'm doing. I'm stepping back two podcasts a week, one live training a week, some cool blog posts that are designed to make you think. And every quarter will still have a challenge because I love challenges, they're fun, they give me a chance to get to know everyone and help support everybody that I perhaps can't at a paid level for free. And that's fun, that's fun for me, it's rewarding for me and that's something I wanna continue to do, okay? So that's, that's what it's looking like. Some boundaries, some more evolution, some more change, um, and I just wanted to share to let you know, because we are still going to have the Dossie live takeovers. We're still going to, you know, my Dossies are phenomenal at showing up when I, you know, I'm not around. I want to be scheduling those in regularly because I have some phenomenal Dossies that I want to showcase that I think everybody in here could learn amazing things from. So, you know, I want to be doing more of that, more connection, more community, more networking, and really supporting my paid clients the best that I possibly can. All right. So, let me know what you think. If you do watch the replay, if you are thinking about setting new boundaries yourself, if you're thinking that currently you give your audience too much content, let me know how you're planning on stripping it back. Because I'd be really interested. You know, this is a, I feel an ongoing conversation um, that needs to be had in the space. I feel like we're all doing the same. You know, everybody's doing the three to five Facebook groups, posts, everybody's trying to use their personal page to get more reach because you know Facebook pages apparently are dead. Although Facebook pages are not dead. Um, Liz, it might actually be fun. Um, I'm, I'm calling Liz out here just, just on the cuff. But like Liz, maybe we could do a, a dotty takeover um, where we talk in here about Facebook pages and Facebook page reach. I feel like that would be kind of cool. Maybe next week, let me know. Um, <laughs> I just put Liz on the spot there. But Liz knows about Facebook pages and I think Facebook pages are not dead. I really love my Facebook pages. <laughs> there we go. Done. Um so I think I think, you know, that is where I want my business to go. Um could all change. I could turn around to you next month and be like, oh my god, I'm so lonely. <laughs> I have to be in the group all the time, but I doubt it. <laughs> Joyce, this has been really good and helpful why I'm disliking my group. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, I feel like I've been giving them not enough, but I have, I've just been comparing myself. Comparisonitis, it's, ugh, 
I, I really felt like that last week. If it helps, I felt exactly like you and exactly like Joyce last week, where I felt like I wasn't giving enough, like I wasn't showing up enough, like I wasn't doing the things. And actually, I just realized I don't want those businesses. I don't, I don't want those businesses where I feel like every single day I have to write some, you know, epic blog or I have to sell some new program all the time. Next year, I'll only be selling four things in my business. It was going to be three, but now it's going to be four. Um, and that, that feels really good for me, really good for me. And it's very, very stripped back from how I've ever been in my business. And it's very stripped back from what I see everyone else doing, which kind of terrifies me a bit because I'm watching all these people and they've got like a new program every week. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> am I going to lose a ton of money here? Um, but I doubt it because this year I only sold six things and my revenue went up. So it's going to be fine. You know, I think scaling back and, and working out what's not making you feel good and changing it is a good thing. And that's something that I've always preached in my business and that last week really hit home for me was that I needed to allow myself the freedom to change and to grow and to evolve and to be okay with the fact that I didn't want to be a 24-7 content creator. I want to be a quality content provider and if people want to step up and get more, absolutely they can. And there are different levels of investment for different people to make it easier, right? Yay, Dusty Takeover on Facebook pages. Okay, cool. Liz, hit me up with a date. We will um, we'll do it because I think it would be kind of cool to like, um, if you're up for this, and again, I'm just, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Um, I think I would like to maybe do some like Facebook page audits. Um, and so we can see like some really good Facebook pages and why they're good and then why they're like not. We can use mine if you want because mine, some of mine's crap. So <laughs> I don't mind guinea pigging that. Me too. I'm stripping back, stripping scale and content, social media platforms. Yes, Joyce. I love that. Matea, fair enough. Do it in a way that feels right for you now and it'll be the right one. Thank you. This space feels good and I appreciate you and all you do. You're so welcome, my love. I'm so glad that you're here. Like genuinely, I, I see you on lives and I see you pop up every so often. I'm like, ah, you make me smile. So thank you for contributing. Kirsten, love this. This is exactly what I'm trying to do. Like I mentioned before, I was focusing on tons of different things and not doing my three core things really, really well. Yeah. Right. So I think um, <laughs> that's all it's in pages <laughs> with the evil laugh. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some glossy takeovers. We're going to have some content for me. We're going to have some podcasting, all that kind of cool stuff. And collectively as a movement, maybe we can start putting this out, right? And, and putting the seeds out that we don't have to be doing all the things all the time. And I think that's, that's kind of where a lot of people have got to. We're doing all the things. And actually, it means that there's a lot of pressure that we don't really need because we're under so much pressure everywhere else in life that I don't really want to be under a ton in my business as well. Okay. Kimberly, I love that. Scale up the fun stuff, which means more Snapchat filters. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so I will get in touch with Liz. We will hook up a day um, where we can do the Dotty Life takeover on Facebook pages and some audits, which is going to be ace. I'm very, very excited for that. We're going to get lean, um, which I'm very excited about. And obviously, if you have anything you need in the meantime, feel free. Drop me an email. Like, you know, you can tag me in the group. Just be aware, like, if you really want my answer, I'm going to give you it. I'm going to give you 150% of my commitment. So if there's a question that you're then going to go out and, like, ask in 20 other places, maybe don't put it here first. Um, just for my own sanity and for everybody else's. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, I think people's heads will explode. Um, and then, obviously, if you need anything from me, give me a shout. And if you want to be on a wait list for the Dotties the next time it opens, we will be opening in December for the final time in 2018. Um, and there will be 15 spots available for new Dotties in December then let me know and I will put together a wait list um, and you can obviously do that. But yeah, Dotty Takeovers, Mastin Kirsten, it's, it's in the Dotty group. Put your name down. Like, I will hook you up. I would love to see Dotty Takeovers on rebranding and writing. Uh, those are two of my favorite things. So yeah, let, let me know when. <laughs> 
All right, my loves, have wonderful, wonderful afternoons, evenings, mornings, wherever you are in the world. I will be back in here tomorrow. I've got some cool posts um, and some analysis stuff for you tomorrow on metrics um, and some cool stuff that I noticed throughout my launch that I'm going to share um, in here tomorrow. And if you need me in the meantime, I'm around. Yay! Happy Halloween! <laughs>